Good morning, Saturday, January 30th, uh, 2021. And today we're going to talk about the simplicity of the major scale. Okay, when we talk about the simplicity of the major scale, there's a couple of things that we need to know going into this discussion. So if you're not clear on them, here's a brief explanation. You need to know this. It's not hard to figure out based on the explanation I'm going to give. Uh, one of them is tetrachords. The second item is solfege. And both of those are really simple because tetrachords are not like a group of hidden chords and only the musicians know. It's a way to describe the segments of a major scale. Okay. So when we look at the major scale, the major scale is built up of intervals. And uh, even back in the 80s, you know, in high school, uh, the guitar players would talk about whole, whole, half, whole, whole, half. But nobody really understood what it meant other than it meant a bunch of whole steps and half steps put together, which in all honesty is the simplicity of the structure or the discipline. And that's an important word. There's a discipline to the major scale. It's what gives it the name. So when you look at whole, whole, half, whole, whole, half, what you really have is whole, whole, half twice. It's just two segments of whole, whole, half separated by a whole step. So when you look at it that way, you have these two matching uh, segments of the major scale and their structure is identical. So that major scale on one string or on multiple. Okay, we have the first note, then we have a whole step, a whole step, and a half step, then up a whole step, that's the separator, then whole, whole, half. So whole, whole, half is the magic. It's a four-note segment. It's very simple. But it is the discipline. And here's why. No matter where you play that segment, you are creating the first four notes of a major scale. Whole, whole, half. So anywhere you start that, you're creating a major scale, at least the first four notes. Okay? So when you add the second four notes... You have or or wherever else you want to play it. So when you see people say the 1, the 2, the 7, the 9, the 11, the 13, the flat 13, these are all interval names. We're breaking it down to the first four. So for the major scale, you have a whole step, a whole step, and a half step. We're not going to get much into their distances today in regards to a major second, a major third and a perfect fourth. That is what they are. We're going to get to that. But whole, whole, half. Then separated by a whole step, you have another whole, whole, half. And that comprises the two components of the simplicity of the major scale. So now, looking at both of those together, we have whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. And that's the major scale. So wherever you play that or start that process, you create a major scale. So it doesn't matter where. thing about this structure is when you look at it now this might get a little confusing do re mi fa so la ti do which is going to take us we're going to start moving into solfeggio and why it's important but when you take the two halves and you add solfeggio to it creating that major scale each one of those interval syllables has a meaning in relation to do it has an impression it makes a particular sound that we hear. So as a quick example of the two segments of the, um, the two tetrachords put together to make the major scale and the concept of solfeggio together, we have this. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. What if we took this do and we pivoted it to so? We just called it so and continued the same discipline of the structure. So if the second half, which starts on do, is whole, whole, half, and we call this do, uh, so, 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 la, ti, do. Well, now F is, is now do. So, la, ti, do, so, do. If we play C as do, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. The ear hears that major scale. That collection of holes and halves creates a particular harmonic impression that your ear hears, whether you understand it or not. 
So now if we take the note Do, or the note C, and we change it and call it So, So, La, Ti, Do. Well, So is the fifth note of a major scale, the structure. Do, do Re, Mi, Fa, So. That's the fifth note. Okay, so now we're taking our original Do, which is C, and we're calling it So. So now it's not working or functioning or sounding the same as it did when it was Do. Now it's So. Now it's the fifth degree. And that structure will create different consequences as you start to build chords, which again, we'll get to that. Breaking it down to just these four notes. Check this out. So, La, Ti, Do, Do, Ti, La, So, Fa, Mi, Re, Do. And your ear has just moved from the key of C to the key of F and has pivoted and changed keys like a jazz player. Whether you know it or not, this stuff is already in our heads. We already have it. It's like a sculpt, a sculpture. He gets a block of clay, the shape is in there, he just carves it out. It's in there. Same thing holds true with the structure and the simplicity of the major scale. So going over that one more time before we get into solfege, we've got do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Now we're gonna turn this into so. We're gonna make it so. So la, ti, do, ta, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. And our ear has just switched between the two key centers. And the magic of that is in the half step, the mi to fa and the T to do, which we will explore. But that's something you need to get a grasp on. You need to be able to grab your instrument and go, do, re, mi, fa, do, re, mi, fa, do, re, mi, fa, do, re, mi, fa. And you want to sing it out loud. This is what you do in practice, not on stage, not when you're trying to impress your friends. It's what you do when you practice so you can hear that half step. This is so important because if we take this major tetrachord, do, re, mi, fa. We take fa and we go, you know, let's get fun with it. Let's call this T. T, do. The structure tells us do, ti, do. between T and do is a half step. So, do, re, mi, fa, T, do. Do, re, mi, fa, T, do. Do, re, mi, fa. Suddenly, man, we're, we're playing jazz. We're moving through key centers and our ear hears it. Our, our head... Our heart, our soul, our emotion almost can't keep up with the discovery. It's amazing. The keys to the kingdom are right there in this little four-note structure. Do, re, mi, fa. Do, re, mi, fa. So, la, ti, do. The really cool thing about that is do, re, mi, fa, starting on C, where C is do. Do, re, mi, fa are the exact same notes or second half notes of the F major scale. So, la, ti, do, so, do. And just like that, our ear hears the change of key. If we make any note T of a new key, for example, here's G. It's just a G chord, just want to get the sound of G in your head. We make that T. T, do, so, do. Guess what? Your ear is now key of A flat. Just like that. Just uh, The ear hears it. We don't know because we're idiots, but the ear's not an idiot. The ear knows. That's the magic. So what you want to do is you want to get this concept of the major tetrachord in your head. This is so important. It's such a small piece of the puzzle, but it is the key that lets you into the kingdom of hearing all this other stuff. Once your ear hears the major scale this way, as soon as something's not the major scale or it's in another key, you're like, ah, and you can hear it. And in the discovery process of this entire huge, hairy bag of creativity, the simple things are so obvious. And the major tetrachord is very simple. Now, let's talk about solfeggio. Again, it's just a way to give syllables to the major scale degrees. Degrees being the notes of the major scale. Uh, the uh, intervals, and it, whatever you want to call that. For now, it's not important. The language is such that do means do no matter where you are. So if you make this T, this D note is now T, T, do, and your ear's like, okay, I know where I'm at. Now, if you understand the major scale physically on the instrument and somebody goes T, well, nobody's really going to go T. But when you hear that, especially when you're practicing, okay, you know where you are. It's like, okay, I'm home. Now, the physical area of being home in the major scale is a different lesson, and we'll get into that, I promise. 
but you've got to get your ear focused on that major tetrachord because that major tetrachord, which is whole, whole, half, is the first two sections of the entire major scale. It's only those two components. And anywhere you play that, you are creating a major scale. Okay? And I'm going to throw on real quick, before we get into solfege, uh, an A drone, a string drone, a pad, of the note C. So here we go. All right, so this is just a note C. And I'm going to walk through, I'm not going to riff and solo and be a rock star. I'm just going to walk through the C major scale. It has a certain sound to it. Tito, Tito, Mi, Tito, Mi, Fa, So, La, Tito. So now that C is playing, our ear hears C. There's a couple different ways I can do this. I don't want to confuse the issue, but I'm going to change the tonality by only changing one note of the scale I'm playing, which is going to determine how that low C is functioning. If you can hear it, great. If you've got questions about this, man, pause this, put it in the comments, and we'll cover it as much as we can, because this is really the fun. The single C note is not telling us what key it's in because there's only one note and there's no definition there's no definitive tones this is just the lowest note in this process it could probably be lower but this will work so here's C major now let's make this C minor and what that means is the root note this low droning C is going to be, and don't worry about this too much, but just hear it. It's going to be functioning as the sixth degree of a major scale, okay? And that would be the key of E flat. But again, don't worry about that. Now the entire tonality in the room here has turned minor. It sounds sad. sun come out a little bit and we've changed the tonality to sound fun and I chose mixolydian there not for any reason other than I just I know it and I felt it and that's what I wanted to hear um, so going between major and minor when there's no definition within the rhythm section or this droning note um, C major making it minor. I changed this to C mixolydian. The point is this, once you have, trust me on this, let me stop this droning. Once you have the sound of the tetrachord in your head, you will get the sound of the major scale in your head. And then we're going to start to look at how to change that structure. So when it comes to the building blocks of the simplicity of the major scale, don't be fooled by, you know, Mary Poppins or the sound of music, not Mary Poppins, the sound of, don't be fooled by, you know, the sound of music and how, you know, you know, how fluffy that, that movie is. That is a strong lesson in the major scale. And if you're a guitar player, man, once you have that thing under your belt, you can start to see all the pentatonics, you can see the diminished scales, you can see everything you need to see based on the modes, where you're functioning. And when it's time to play, and you have these things under your belt, you can play and you can develop that playground that surrounds your bag of tricks. So you pull out a bag of tricks because a scenario or a particular playground that you're on has certain characteristics, we'll say, or restrictions. You know, if you go to a blues jam, you got to play the blues. Well, some people, when they get to, um, the, you know, the, the first change in a blues progression, they're doing all their pentatonic stuff over a dominant chord, minor pentatonic stuff, which sounds bluesy. OK, 
okay, it sounds great, but then they go to this, the next chord, which is also a five chord, and all of a sudden it's like the options are even more limited. Well, if you understand how that note is, that chord is functioning in blues, it's going to function like that in any, any blues jam you go to. Whenever they go to the four chord, it's going to function the same way. There's lots of different things you can do around it. Approaching it by half step, uh, approaching the four chord with the melodic minor scale, but none of that stuff is going to make any difference if your ear can't hear those half steps. And it's so simple. So to round this whole thing up in a simple way, learn the major tetrachord, or you can forget the major tetrachord after you understand what it is, and play whole, whole, half, whole, whole, half, and then finish that major scale with another whole, whole, half. And learn to recognize that around the neck. Now what we're going to do in the next um, entry into this major scale simplicity is we're going to look at it physically on the instrument. We're going to hone in on how to play it, how to look at it, how to see it, and a little bit about um, knowing the notes on the neck. This is super important. I know there's a lot of notes, and let me add to this, that when you look at the vast amount of notes available on the neck, there's only so many C notes. Therefore, there's only so many C flat notes or B notes. You know, there, there's just not that many, but the ideas and creativity that comes from it are just infinite. So it can get a little daunting. So I liken it to the, um, the idea of a, uh, a mixing console. You look at a mixing console, and my God, there's so many rows of buttons and knobs and things. and It's like, oh, how does anybody do that? Well, first thing is to understand just one of the rows. Once you understand the input section and the row for the channel, and then you learn how it gets output and how you can blend it with the other channels and then how to use the aux sends to send a portion of the signal to, say, a reverb unit and then bring it back in to another channel, it starts to become a lot less complicated. So you have one row, you understand it, now you understand all the rows, and then you can make art with it as a mixer. You know, whether it's live mixing or studio mixing and editing, it's all the same thing. What's important is that you take the first point, as Dick Grove used to say, you figure out this point and everything grows outwardly from that. So the construction of the major scale is gonna be the, excuse me, the ability to hear it, to hear the half steps, but at first, just understand that whole, whole, half, and then separated by a whole step is the same structure. Whole, whole, half. Don't worry so much that the first half is the C major scale and the second half is uh, the first four notes of the F major scale or whatever it turns out to be. Um, I might have said that wrong, but forgive me and beat me up in the comments. Once you take that four note segment and you see it around the neck, okay, however you decide to play it, whether it's... Um, doesn't matter, and you practice it, you see it, you're going to know that when you play a C note, if you play that structure over it, or if you play a C major chord, and you play that structure over it, you are further defining the major scale. And hopefully this was helpful. If you have questions about any of this, just give me a call through the comment section, and I'll answer as fast as I possibly can. So with that, uh, enjoy, and we will see you in the next rodeo.